night, guys. Well, it is a cold, rainy winter night here in uh, mid-August. I noticed the maple leaves around uh, the Finger Lakes of New York are turning all different colors. It is looking like fall here. In the middle of August, it is now a Monday night, August 19th, 2024. And uh, before I go bury myself under the blankets, at the risk of uh, beating a dead horse, I want to turn my attention one more time to this paper that I uh, read from uh, a couple of nights ago and I want again to thank Eric Lee from medium.com for uh, <coughs> sending me this and <coughs> <coughs> so a couple of nights ago I I kind of started in the middle. I read the middle section and I'm going to read the opening section for those of you still trying to figure out overshoot. This is a very good introduction to overshoot uh, by these three Doomer chicks by the name of Nandita Bajaj, Eileen Christ, and Kristen Stade. So, uh, one thing, of course, as you will notice, a lot of this is based on the work of William Reese. Uh, not surprisingly, but let's uh, read the opening salvo to Confronting the United Nations Pro-Growth Agenda, a call to reverse ecological overshoot. Again, guys, I fully understand that calling on the United Nations, probably the biggest architects of ecological overshoot in the history of the planet, calling on the United Nations to reverse uh, ecological overshoot is like asking Sancho Panza to start a uh, chipmunk protection society. It ain't gonna happen. These three Doomer chicks know goddamn well the United Nations is not going to reverse overshoot. But anyway, uh, don't think that I'm slipping into any ridiculous hopium because I'm not, but it's still a good uh, education into the United Nations architecture of overshoot. Take it away, girls. <clears throat> the United Nations was created in 1945 with the historic pledge to uphold world peace. There you go. They really succeeded in that and serve as an institutional setting for collaboration among all nations. Eighty years later, we find ourselves in the midst of multiple social and ecological crises. These dire and mounting threats stem from our advanced condition of overshoot which describes our, our predicament wherein the growth of the global economy has substantially outpaced the capacity of Earth's natural systems, marine, forest, grasslands, wetlands, freshwaters, soils, to process human waste output and regenerate their ecological wealth and biodiversity. The UN emerged from prevailing ideas at the time of its founding, you know, 1945, including that endless economic growth brings prosperity and well-being, that human ingenuity can overcome all constraints to growth, 
and that nature and non-humans exist as resources to serve us. While these ideas have directly led to the present day cascading crises, the UN appears invested in their obsolete framing even as circumstances are becoming more desperate. Since the mid 20th century, the expansion of the human enterprise has accelerated on a number of interconnected levels. Growth of economic extraction, production and trade, increased consumption, higher standards of living for some, increasing energy use, a growing global consumer population, enormous growth of the food sector, relentless technological, including infrastructure, sprawl, and an exponential increase of the human population and the global livestock population. <clears throat> We've all heard about uh, how uh, humans and livestock now comprise 96% of mammalian biomass on the planet. Meanwhile, a 2020, four years ago, science publication offered a sobering quantification of technospheric growth. While 120 years ago, the mass of the technosphere, the total amount of man-made stuff was 3% of Earth's biomass. By 2020, the technosphere exceeded the weight of all living beings. By 2040, the mass of human stuff is projected to grow to three times the planet's biomass. Briefly put, the industrial technosphere serving 8 billion people connected within a global capitalist system is overtaking the planet. What we have learned is that this explosion of growth at breakneck speed is a recipe for climate breakdown, mass extinction, global toxification, destabilizing all complex life, and undermining humanity's prospects for high quality living and even for survival. In this article, we argue that the United Nations uh -huh, needs to reassess its growth biased orientation and extricate itself from the corporate and religious interests that are undermining its professed goals of peace, prosperity, and stability. We include a brief review of the UN's history including its departure under the influence of these interests from acknowledging and addressing the ecological harm of unmitigated demographic and economic growth, which uh, we talked about a lot in the last uh, reading. We outline a path toward correcting our advanced state of ecological overshoot, which ain't gonna happen, beginning with resurrecting leadership on reducing the global population, sure as shit ain't gonna happen, through rights-based approaches. In addition, we urge the United Nations to acknowledge and part ways with its human exceptionalist approaches that treat nature and non-human beings 
as resource for human exploitation, which ain't going to happen. Approaches that have ripped the fabric of Earth's life-sustaining biophysical systems, in addition to offering counsel on population reduction strategies that sure as shit ain't going to happen, we present current literature on pathways to contracting our economic excesses with attention to equity and justice. Ain't gonna happen. Anyway, so the first thing on the agenda is confronting ecological overshoot. <clears throat> All right. If the 19th and 20th centuries were the centuries of progress, wherein material prosperity and technological advancement appeared with, within reach of all humanity, the 21st century and beyond, assuming there is a beyond, or the time of reckoning with the ignored externalities and consequences of this progress, overshoot is the engine of an anthropogenic mass extinction event that recent scientific reports warns is accelerating. Overshoot also undermines nature's capacity to mitigate climate change on a double register. Human-driven global heating releases carbon stored in Earth's ecosystems and soils while continued destructive incursions into ecosystems weakens their capacity to absorb emissions. Alongside the perils of ecological drawdown and rapid climate change, overshoot of industrial humanity is also driving environmental contamination from local to global scales. Earth's biosphere may be likened to a thin film of life encompassing the planet and extending a few kilometers into crust and atmosphere. This finite envelope within which all life exists in a relatively closed system is increasingly besieged by toxic substances like plastics, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, industrial chemicals, and pharmaceutical waste. The mounting pollution and degradation of the biosphere are attenuating the epidemiological environment of life, promoting conditions for infectious, zoonotic, and chronic diseases to spread. Well, well, again, there's always, you know, a little bit of silver lining in the cloud, the black cloud of overshoot. Yes, bring on the infectious zoonotic diseases while you still can. Anyway, a further dangerous outgrowth of overshoot is its potential to fuel conflict Overshoot induces growing scarcities, dislocation of populations, disruption of supply chains, adverse harvest events, events in freshwater depletion and pollution. In brief, overshoot is the underlying driver of climate breakdown, biodiversity collapse, global toxification and aggravation of social conflicts and war. This predicament lowers the quality of life of present and future people, has a corrosive influence on democratic institutions, presents opportunity for dangerous demagogues and tyrants, obviously, 
can you say Donald Trump, and reduces the capacity of young people to believe in a bright future. The accelerating condition of overshoot, the outcome of too many people having or desiring a high consumption standard of living in a polluted world of declining resources tends to foster divisive and fear-driven socio-psychological states. Overshoot makes humanity far less conducive to the noble inclination of human nature, like sharing, collaborating, and equitably coexisting. It is clear that we must act as an international community with meaningful contributions from UN leadership, yeah, right, to confront the root cause of our plight while there is still time to be proactive. The called for program of action is audacious in scope, but simple to articulate. There must be fewer of us extracting, producing, and consuming less and living far more equitably within the entire community of life. At our stage of advanced overshoot, this program of action is mandatory simply for survival and prevention of unnecessary death and suffering. Importantly, it also lays the groundwork for a world underpinned by a planetary reality where biodiversity and its ecological gifts are restored to their abundances, complexity, and resilience, and there are enough sources of livelihood for all to enjoy a simple but high quality standard of living. You will have nothing and you will be happy. In, and I'm mixing up the UN with the World Economic Forum, I'm sorry. In sum, countermanding overshoot with the goal of fewer of us consuming less with a commitment to equity is about more than survival. It promises a redirection of human history away from the modalities of conquest, colonization, and exploitation, killing, conflict, war between humans, and what Doomer in Chief, the cognitively dissociated UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called, quote, our suicidal war on nature. You go, Antonio Guterres. And then it goes into where we uh, picked up. I will put the link on here. I think it's a link to that paper. But anyway, uh, except for the ain't gonna happen angle, it's, uh, it, it is a good primer <laughs> incorporating uh, the works of William Reese and uh, all these other folks. For anybody uh, trying to figure out what is really going on. What is really going on? I mean, big question, what is really going on? Well, I guess it's the Democratic National Convention. But again, I, I, I do want to seriously, before I close tonight, all joking aside, I want to send out a big round of applause for Planned Parenthood, who I guess is passing out free IUDs 
and uh, tickets to free vasectomies uh, outside of the uh, Democratic National Convention. So, uh, you know, give credit where credit's due. Uh, free vasectomies for all. I want to hear Kamala Harris say, uh, she's already said $6,000 for everyone having a child. So I think she should counterbalance that. I want to hear Kamala Harris state at the Democratic National Convention offering free vasectomies and tubal ligations for any American who wants, well not just any American, any, any American or anyone else on the planet who wants one. And of course, I would add a uh, mandatory vasectomy or tubal ligation for every single man, woman, and child uh, entering the United States. Uh, the day we have a, uh, a uh, U.S. presidential candidate uh, offering free vasectomies for Americans and mandatory uh, vasectomies and tubal ligations for anyone crossing into this country. That will be the day that uh, I will return to the voting booth, which means it ain't going to happen. I will never return to the voting booth again. Ain't going to happen because there is not one politician on this planet uh, who is going to offer free vasectomies and tubal ligations to Americans and mandatory ones for anybody coming into this country. That'll be the day. Anyway. I gotta wrap this up and uh, get back to my high consumption lifestyle while I still can. Bye guys. Ugh. What do you think, little dog? Free vasectomies for everybody. You know, Pop, I got more than a vasectomy. Uh, they had to dig my testicles out of my body, my undescended testicles. So there will not be any more little Sancho Ponzas running around the planet. Bye, guys.